Pinwheels. Every April, you'll see them dotting courthouse lawns and front yards across your community. The pinwheel reminds us of what we want for all children, a childhood defined by playfulness and joy. Pinwheels are the national symbol for the movement that brings us here today. This month, we focus on what it takes to protect our most precious resource. Welcome to the kickoff of Child Abuse Prevention Month. Good morning. Every 10 seconds, somewhere in the United States, there is a report that comes in that a child has been neglected or abused. That means already just today, nationwide, we've received more than 4,000 reports about children it might be too late to protect. My name is Noelle Russell, and I'm the Director of Communications for the Indiana Department of Child Services. And today we're here to talk about prevention, what we can do as a community to lift up caregivers, to rally around them and show them they have our full support. In Indiana, that support begins with our state leadership. Please join me in welcoming the 51st governor of the state of Indiana, Eric J. Holcomb. Thank you, Noel. Uh, you all have put a lot of work into this, and it feels like a uh, a good gathering. I'm going to learn about what flat Eric means later. I mean, it's it's not very often that I sit in a seat with a guy like staring back at me. But thank you for all the time and effort that has gone into this assembly. Thank you, Director, or should I say Captain Stigden. Um, thank you, um, Shannon and Jeff, and to everyone who has made time to be here today in our State House. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you for speaking out. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for looking out for Hoosier youth and their strong families. It's obviously April, which means it's Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, rightly, we put this month in the spotlight to try to get people's attention. But it is not just a month endeavor. This is a cause that far exceeds any these aren't small pinwheels anymore, but far exceeds any pinwheel or proclamation, which I'd probably have signed, or a page on the calendar. This is, as you all know, 365, 24-7. So we do. It's not just a month. That month is to get the attention. But that's why I, I did want to just express just how grateful I am, you mentioned the team, Noel, how grateful I am to be part of this team, to be part of this partnership. I get to see their firsthand on a regular basis just how many lives that you positively touch and impact and lift up and change course in their familial setting and that's that's powerful stuff that's truly a, a reason to be here the reason to give those young kiddos and that's what folks at your our department of child services do every day they wake up they come to work and they're thinking about stronger families and they're thinking about Who's your youth? And they're thinking about ensuring that they have an environment where they can grow and thrive and have the opportunity, just have the opportunity to realize their dreams, just like every other kiddo out there. That's why I'm so dang proud that here in Indiana, we actually saw a decrease in the number of cases, 17.7. 
last year in 2022. And I'm confident because of how all these stars have aligned that we're going to continue to see momentum on this front, on this most important front. And so whether you're here as a community partner or a volunteer, a family member, um, whether you're working at a school or a hospital or you're at the DCS itself, we're working hand in glove. And that teamwork is the reason why we're able to make such progress. And so, yes, I am very proud to proclaim it Child Abuse Prevention Month. And I'm really proud, maybe even more so, to introduce one of your teammates, someone who brings the passion to her profession every single day. She did it long before this assignment. She's done it every single day she's been in this position. And I suspect, I'd, I'd bet on, long after this assignment, she'll be devoting her passion and her talents and her heart to Hoosier youth. Your DCS has never been in better hands. And it's my honor to introduce to you, Captain Terry Stigda. Thank you, Governor. Oh, good morning, everyone. Now, some of you might know that before I came to DCS, I worked as a nurse. I still am a nurse, in fact. I worked at Riley Hospital for Children for almost 20 years. And let me tell you, in that amount of time, you see a lot of things. And some of them, you never forget. So it was pretty early in my career when I had my first patient who had been a victim of child abuse. I was working night shift in the intensive care unit or in the ICU at the time. I'd been there for maybe six months. So I was brand new at taking these types of patients. And I find out that there's a child in the operating room who's going to need an ICU bed as soon as he gets out. So we're just doing our thing, preparing the room and you don't necessarily get a lot of details. And all I know is that it's just a little boy 18 months old, and the surgeon is working to repair multiple injuries. So the child is in the OR, and we're getting the ICU room ready, and then out walks the neurosurgeon. So keep in mind, I am a brand new nurse, so I am super intimidated. But this surgeon is so nice and so soft-spoken, and he's just really taking his time, talking us through the case, through what's happening with this little boy. And I'll never forget how he described the child's head trauma. He said, it was like trying to get a puzzle together, but you just don't know what the picture looks like because there are just too many pieces. And the nursing staff were asking questions and getting the details, all the things you do to make sure that you're ready. And this man, again, so soft-spoken, puts a hand up real polite in the middle of a sentence and he just says, excuse me, I need a moment. So he walks into the room that we've just gotten ready where we're going to put this little boy and he pulls the curtain closed. Now the lights are off, so it's kind of dark, um, but I can see through a little crack in the curtain and I see him lower himself onto the floor and he put his face in his hands and he cried. And I thought with everything this man has seen, this still really bothers him, and he'd been doing it for years. Now, as obvious as it seems now, I remember thinking back then that an experienced surgeon is showing me I can never be okay with this, I can never get comfortable with this, and I can never stop seeing my patients as the people they are. So a few minutes later, the neurosurgeon comes back out, we resume our report, and then finish preparing for our patient's arrival. In this work, 
Whether it's the first time we've seen a child or the 500th, every child deserves to be seen just like they're the first. Every child deserves our full attention. If they're in our care, it's the care, what we do for them and how we do it, that's the most important. It's showing them they are loved, they are safe, and we are here to help. And I wish I could stand up here today and tell you that that story has a happy ending. That neurosurgeon knew as soon as he got in the OR that that little boy didn't have a chance. Now, I can't share the family circumstances that led up to this specific event, and I can't disclose exactly what they needed. But thinking about the children I've cared for over the years, the needs have typically fit in one or more of these categories. Needing reliable child care. Needing another trustworthy adult to help with child rearing. Training for parenting skills. Or treatment for substance use disorder. But at the end of the day, no matter the cause, we have to agree child abuse is preventable. And it's why we stand here every April. Our theme this year for Child Abuse Prevention Month is building together prevention and partnership. And that is so perfect because partnership embodies so many things that we already know. Namely, we cannot do this alone. And the more people we have dedicated to the same cause, the better our outcomes are going to be. Now, let me take just a second to brag on some very important people, some of who are here in the room today. The Department of Child Services employs 4,000 public servants, and they work extremely hard, not just nine to five, not just when it's convenient, day in and day out. They answer the call 24 seven. And I don't mean that figuratively. When that phone rings at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 4 a.m., we go. We are an agency that does not say no. Now, having said that, a lot of the work we do at DCS and probably most of what we're known for happens after we receive a report of child abuse and neglect. And folks, that's already too late. We have to lock arms in the fight to prevent child abuse, prevention in partnership. Now, one important partnership I'd like to highlight today is the Healthy Families Indiana program. And we may have some folks here today from Healthy Families Indiana. Healthy Families Indiana is such a great example of building together. It is, if you excuse me saying so, a next level partnership. So our partners at Healthy Families, if you've never heard of them, work with health clinics, hospitals, and social service programs, basically anyone connected with families. And what they do is identify families who are at risk of becoming involved in the child welfare system. And they work with them to prevent us from having to step in. Healthy families work specifically with new parents. Now, I don't think I have to tell any parent here how hard it is to have a new baby. Late nights, not much sleep. There's so much you're suddenly responsible for and you're exhausted and trying to figure it all out. Who wouldn't want help with a baby? Who doesn't need help with a new baby? So what Healthy Families does is they provide that support. They come alongside new parents, they help them, they educate them, they take those steps that might seem so simple to some people, but really do make an enormous difference in keeping a child safe. You don't know what you don't know. So something like teaching a new mom about safe sleep or how to prepare a crib so that her baby is safe can literally save a life. Healthy Families is all about creating an environment where kids can be safe and healthy. The best part, it's all voluntary. Our clients aren't resisting, because they want to be there. And our hope is that families in the program will never ever have to have any involvement with the Department of Child Services. Now, another statewide program is Community Partners for Child Safety. There is so much available to families who need help and Community Partners is there to help make those connections. I'm talking about schools and hospitals, churches and childcare providers, local government services, 12-step programs, all the different things to help people in the community who need just a little extra support. Now, I know I'm spending a lot of time talking about programs and services, but I also want to remind you the most important partner is sitting right here. It's you, it's me, it's all of us. Think about the caregivers in your lives. Think about their stressors. You can't fix every problem, but what can you do? You can call them up. You can check in on them. 
You can pick up a bag of groceries for a neighbor when you're already at the store. Or you can swing by and offer to watch the kids while mom or dad takes a nap. It's the little things, and they add up. Support doesn't have to be a Herculean effort. It's just looking out for each other. A neighbor, a family member, someone who goes to your church. You don't have to know them well, and you don't have to have all the answers. You just have to be willing to step up even when you haven't been asked, especially when you haven't been asked. Now, all that being said, the unfortunate reality is that we know we can never reach everyone who needs support. We cannot prevent every single case of abuse and neglect, no matter how much we want to, no matter how hard we try. That's why it's so important that we know what to do when someone does, something does go wrong. Now, everyone here today should leave knowing how to reach the Indiana Child Abuse and Neglect Hotline. Now, remember when I said this work is 24 seven? The hotline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if you think a child is being harmed, we need you to make that phone call. You don't have to leave your name. You don't have to be absolutely 100% sure. Call us, we'll check it out. It may be nothing, it could be something. Many times we find out a family is just doing the best that they can. They just need a little help finding resources in their community so that they can safely raise their child. But we can't check on that child if we don't know. We can't help if we don't know that someone needs help. Now, when I was growing up, we actually learned phone numbers. Raise your hand if you remember your home phone number growing up. I love it. Yeah, I'm talking landline for you youngins in here. Now, I could not tell you 90% of the numbers in this phone. But I do know that once a number's in there, it's in there for good. And this is one phone book that will never run out of space. So do I I'll get them out. I'm watching. I will call you out if you don't pick up your phone. And I'm talking to the media too. I want you to have your phones out. You're going to need this information. Hey, are you ready? This is the number for the Indiana Child Abuse and Neglect Hotline. The number is 800 800 55 56. Okay, one more time for those of you that were just trying to figure out how do I add a number to my phone, no problem. I will repeat it again. It is 800-800-5556. Now, I hope you never need that number, but if you do, you'll be glad to have it. Now, you know the old saying, it takes a village? We say that a lot in this line of work, and we build the best village when we work together. It takes a lot of people and a lot of pieces. Now, when you got here this morning, some of you might have found a marker and a picture on your chair. So if you did, hold it up, please. Okay, all right, should have a little bubble next, speech bubble on it. Okay, now every one of these is different because everyone brings something unique to the village. Now, grab your marker, and here's the phrase I want you to finish. Building families through blank. Fill in the blank. Think about what you think makes a family strong education, faith, support. Be creative, and I'd love it if we had different answers on every one. Now, since it's our theme, I'm going to say building families through partnership. Doesn't that look like me? <laughs> so once you have your answer, I want you to write it down, and before you leave today, I want you to join me at our display back there and add your piece to build our village. Now, before I turn it over to our next speaker, I want to leave you with a few more suggestions of ways that we can all help build strong Indiana families. You can donate to organizations that serve people in need. You can volunteer for programs that help children and families, or you can just identify a need in your community and figure out what you can do to help fill that gap. Every child deserves to be seen, and that starts with all of us today. And so now I'm honored to introduce our next speaker, Shannon Schumacher. Shannon is the president and CEO of The Villages, Indiana's largest nonprofit child and family services agency, serving more than 3,000 children and their families every single day. She has more than 25 years of experience creating and expanding social services for families, and I'm so pleased she's here to share some of her expertise with us today. Please join me in welcoming Shannon Schumacher.
Oh, I'm shorter. Thank you so much, Terry, and thank you, Governor Holcomb. It is truly my honor to be working alongside both of you on this amazing goal, and that is that every child in the state of Indiana has the opportunity to live a happy, healthy, and carefree childhood. And I can't think of a more worthy goal. So I do want to recognize our Child Care Center team who are here with us today, our Children's Village folks. So I would like our center director, Denise Farrell, to stand up. And she has brought the most important people in the room with her, I will let you know. And we have Genovia Macy, there she is. And then we also have Olivia Shipman and Olivia's mom, Micah, and her grandma, Lana, with us. So they have, <laughs> hi, hi. So they have a very important job to do today. Hi. They are going to pass out pinwheels to everybody. They're going to help. They're going to be in the back at the end of this event. And so these are children in our pre-K program. So on, on my way pre-K. So again, my name is Shannon Schumacher, and it is my honor and my privilege to be the CEO of the Villages of Indiana and also the Executive Director of Prevent Child, Ab Prevent Child Abuse Indiana. So Prevent Child Abuse Indiana, we're actually part of a bigger movement, a bigger organization called Prevent Child Abuse America. That is the nation's largest and oldest organization that focuses primarily on preventing child abuse and neglect. So our Prevent Child Abuse Indiana team has a mission and a mission we live every day. And our mission is to be the voice in Indiana for preventing child abuse in all its forms. And how we accomplish that mission is we increase awareness of the problem, so that's a, a very important step, in informing communities about, about solutions. We serve as a valuable resource for families, individuals, and organizations all across the state, and we advocate for expanding and improving programs and policies to prevent child maltreatment. And lastly, we foster a statewide network committed to child abuse prevention. And you'll hear more about that a little bit later. So it is my hope for you today that you leave this event with remembering one very important thing. And I know Director Stigan talked about this, but child abuse and neglect is 100% preventable. And every one of us here can do something to help. So one of the very first things that we can do to help, and it's educate ourselves. You know, things have changed a lot in terms of what is child abuse exactly, and what are the things that are proven to prevent child abuse. So over the past 50 years since Prevent Child Abuse America came into existence, we have been studying through rigorous research and evaluation of what actually works. We know what works. I'll tell you a few things that we know. Here's what we know. We know that parental overload and stress are important factors that we have to address. I will say that again, parental overload. Families are stressed. We know this, we knew this through COVID. Everyone who knows children are the most at risk. And this makes intuitive sense to us. I mean, anybody who has ever been around a toddler and just diverted their eyes for a few seconds knows that young children are very much at risk. We also know that prevention efforts are always under-resourced. They are always under-resourced. And we all know the saying, we all know the saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We know it's true, we know it's true, but I, sadly, funding doesn't flow that way, folks. So, something to remember. So now you may be asking yourself, what can I do to help? What can I do to help? So I know we have some policymakers out there, and if you're a policymaker, you can do a lot of things, I see ya. Um, one of the main things that we can do is to ensure the availability of affordable, high-quality childcare. There is nothing more important 
to an overloaded parent than to know that their child is in a safe, reliable child care. Actually, the other day I was talking to one of our board members about the uh, problem with access to child care, and she told me that um, the last, so she had, she took a pregnancy test to, um, with her second child, and she said the first thing she did after she found out she was pregnant is she picked up her phone and she called her child care provider and she said, please put my name on the list because I know there's a wait list for infant seats. That's the very first thing she did. She said that's the first thing she did even before calling her husband. So this is a very, very serious situation. And I have to say, the families of children in our child care center, so Genovia's family and Olivia's family, they are extremely fortunate to have found high quality, affordable daycare. And because they have that daycare, they can focus on things like employment opportunities. They can focus on things like knowing that their child is safe and cared for when they're not with them. They can focus on things like knowing that their child is going to be prepared for school. And all, all of those things dramatically reduce family and parental stress. Okay, policymakers. The other thing that you can do is to ensure that we have funding and that access to our Healthy Families program. You heard a lot about our Healthy Families program. And Prevent Child Abuse America um, was the inventor of the Healthy Families program. And the Healthy, Healthy Families Home Visitors, we know through research that they reduce the incidence of child maltreatment and increase the well-being of children and parents. So I have a quote from one of our Healthy Families moms. And actually, we have our Healthy Families team here. Could you raise your hand? Yay! So here's a quote from one of our Healthy Families moms. And she said, I think it just just so well. I've learned a lot from the program. It's not only someone I can talk to and confide in, but someone that helps me be a better mom. Learning how to better empathize with my baby and better understand him and his signals and signs. Babies are just, they're hard to communicate with. That helps me be a mom that I want to be. So if you're not a, legislature, a legislator or a, a, a policy maker here, I'm sure that you're a person who cares deeply about children. This I know. So one important thing that you can do, and I, Director Stignan talked about this too, is to simply offer a struggling parent a helping hand and kind words. You've seen them. You've seen these, you've seen these parents. You've seen them at the grocery store. You've seen them at church. You've seen them on the airplane. You've seen them struggling. And I have to say, I will never forget the stranger who returned my shopping cart and gave me such kind words. She said to me, days are short and years are, days are long and years are short. And that was the day that I was trying to put my hysterical infant into the car seat 15 years ago during a rainstorm and I will never forget her. That was one of the many times I myself was one of those overloaded parents. Parenting is the hardest, most important job we will ever have, and no one should go it alone. So because of our partnership, the partnerships with Governor Holcomb, with the Department of Child Services, with Prevent Child Abuse Indiana, with the Villages of Indiana, and with each of you, we can ensure that every Hoosier child has every opportunity to thrive, and to experience a happy and carefree childhood. So now you know, leave with that one thing, child abuse and neglect is 100% preventable, and there are many things that each one of us can do to help. Okay, so now I am gonna turn it over to Jeff Whitman. So Jeff is the director of Prevent Child Abuse Indiana, and he will share how the community as a whole can work together to further reduce abuse and neglect. Thank you. Good morning. Great to see such a nice crowd here. And thanks to everyone who's joining online. Uh, we know that there's a nice a presence online as well. So uh, as Terry said, and as Shannon said, um, we can't do this work without you. 
So thank you this morning to Governor Holcomb, Director Stigden, Shannon Schumacher, and all of you for making time in your schedules to be here. One thing I want to do is just kind of allude to what's already been referred to. This is a team effort. We can't do this work by ourselves. Um, Dr. Melissa Merrick of Prevent Child Abuse America, she is the CEO of Prevent Child Abuse America, recently said, prevention only happens in partnership. And some of the partnerships are evident here today. Many of the partnerships are not. And so what I want you to know is we will talk about things during my, my, my remarks that will focus on ways that you can engage, that you can become a partner in this work. What I'd like to start with is the team of people that I get the privilege to work with every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sometimes we see each other during that time, sometimes we don't because we're all over the state. The Prevent Child Abuse Indiana team, I'd like them to uh, stand up in the back row there, please. These are people that I get to work with. And there's a couple others that are there that maybe aren't able to stand, but we get the job and the privilege of working across the state uh, to partner and to team with people like yourselves who value, at the very core of who we are, children and safety for them. So as, as I get to kind of bring things home this afternoon, or this morning, excuse me, I'd like to talk about ways that each of you can take action. Some of these you've heard already, others you have not. So one of the things that I want to leave you with is you can have a conversation with your child or a child that is significant in your life. A conversation about who is a safe adult in their life. And it doesn't always mean that we are the safe adults in our own child's life. Sometimes things happen and there gets to be distance between us. But if we can't be that person for our own child, we can, we can know that and we can direct them to somebody else or they can tell us, this person can be my safe adult. We all need to have a safe adult. Even when we are adults, we need other safe adults. Uh, I also wanna draw the attention to purchasing a kid's first license plate. If you've seen the license plates with the handprints on them, those license plates, they look just like that. Those license plates, the proceeds of those, the extra money you pay, go directly towards organizations that promote primary prevention activities. And Prevent Child Abuse Indiana is one of those. So if you're at the, the BMV next time and it's time for a new license plate, consider adding a few extra dollars onto your bill because it helps to save children and families in Indiana. I'd like also to uh, talk about what Shannon said, and it was the idea of offering a kind word or even just a word of encouragement. And sometimes we see difficult things. We see a parent frustrated at the end of their rope. We see a parent who just can't make ends meet and has nothing but bad decisions to choose from. And sometimes just knowing that somebody recognizes them, sees them, and takes a moment to say a kind word can be a huge thing any one of us can do. Now something you haven't heard about today is our local child abuse prevention councils. Indiana has a network of child abuse prevention councils representing uh, 59 counties in, across our state. We have 47 councils representing 59 counties. But what does that mean? We have 92 counties in Indiana. We have a lot of work that can still be done. So that's one of the things I want to encourage you to do. Each one of you who has a seat today received a card, and on that card, on the back side of it, there's a QR code. And I know that a ton of you have phones because Terry helped us understand that. So use those phones, scan the QR code on the card, and find a way that you can go to the PKN website, Prevent Child Abuse Indiana, and find a local council. We have a tab on our website. It will take you to a map of Indiana, and if your county does not have a pinwheel on the map, you can contact us and say, how can I help? How, how can I start a council in my county? If your county does have a pinwheel on the map, you can click on that pinwheel. It will take you to information about the local child abuse prevention council, and you can contact them and say, I want to be part of this. I want to do something. I want to do what I can do. 
We can also plant pinwheels, and we know that our, our friends from our children's village are here today. They'll help put pinwheels in your hand. Take them home, put them in your gardens, take them to your places of employment, plant them there. I know there's pinwheels all around our state. It seems like this year, to me, there's more than I've ever seen before, uh, but I'd like that to continue. So plant a pinwheel, it helps people realize that what we want for children is a carefree, whimsical, loving, joyful childhood, not a, child, a childhood full of, where's my next meal gonna come from? Or where's my mom and dad? Also, one of the themes today is to be the wind in a pinwheel. And by you being here, and by you uh, representing that you care about children, you can be the wind for a pinwheel. So please do that, take action, help us with this. Doc, our, our Director Stigdon refer referenced the Child Abuse and Neglect Hotline. We wish we didn't have to have that, but we do. The number 1-800-800-5556 I know is in your phones already. So please save that. Think of that not as a way of getting another family in trouble, but as a way of referring them to a help and, and resources that they need. You are doing something that they can't do themselves possibly because they are in such a difficult spot. You can also contact Prevent Child Abuse Indiana again for using this card and let us know that you want a prevention education training. That's part of the work that we do across the state. We, prevent, we provide training to adults uh, in the form of schools, coaches, staff, staff of organizations that represent kids, even staff of organizations that just do business in Indiana. We all live in Indiana and we can make a difference by providing education to our staff to know a little bit more about what we can do to prevent child abuse and neglect. We can recognize signs and symptoms that could be indicative of child abuse and we can understand how to report how to understand things a little bit more importantly like resilience and what are adverse childhood experiences and even more importantly how are the, the conditions in our community creating adversities that might lead to child abuse and neglect. In addition we provide training in schools and daycare centers to staff and to children helping them understand that their body is a safe place that they are safe and we are, our, our job is to protect them and that they can have a safe adult or know if anyone is bothering them, is anyone making them feel unsafe, they can go and talk to somebody about that. And also how to have healthy relationships. Mr. Rogers was a figure when I was a kid. We, we watched it all the time. We don't have many Mr. Rogers or Mrs. Rogers anymore, but it's all of our job to help promote self healthy relationships and uh, mental wellness within people. Indiana has, in, since 19, or 2022, its first ever statewide prevention framework. And I wanna just draw attention to that because we are starting to, to roll that out in eight pilot counties across our state this year and eight more next year. That prevention framework does what this event here does today. It widens the net of participation for people to be part of the conversation about child abuse and neglect. Everybody here can do something. Please join us in that effort. You can go to the DCS website and ask for a copy of that child abuse prevention framework to be sent to you. You can find a local child abuse council in your area that is doing that work and say, I want to be part of this. And lastly, everyone has a role in preventing child abuse and neglect, not just DCS, not just local law enforcement. We can all do something. One of my favorite quotes is, don't do nothing because you can't do everything. Do what you can. We are all mandated supporters. Child abuse is 100% uh, preventable. We've talked about that several times today. Please go forth with us this afternoon and prevent child abuse in an area near you. Thank you very much. Today you've heard from state leaders and experts in the field of child welfare. But prevention is not about what was set up here on stage today. It's what you do with what you've learned. Child abuse is preventable. 
Thank you so much for coming today and safe travels home.